He's Paul Feinbaum. His uh, book is My Conference Can Beat Your Conference, Why the SEC Rules College Football. It's on sale now. Host of the Paul Feinbaum Radio Network, and he joins us now. You cool with the uh, top four rankings? Uh, I am, but I'm, I'm really not cool with what's been going on on the show. I mean, I feel like a wallflower compared to Dave Zirin and Barkley today. Mm, well, you're a flamethrower, aren't you? Well, uh, not compared to what's, what's been going on, but I'll see if I can maybe uh, get back in the game here. Yeah, I am I am very <laughs> cool with uh, your question. Um, Take a shot at somebody, I, I Paul. Four. Take a shot uh, at somebody. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a pretty good four, Dan, and... I actually would have Florida State second. Uh, I don't know. This committee just doesn't like Jameis Winston or Jimbo Fisher or something. Um, but I, I think, and I heard uh, Gary the other day on, on your show, uh, they do allow us to listen 10 minutes a day at the mothership. And I really, uh, I think he's right. It, it's, it's really not about the top three anymore. It's about whether Mississippi State can, can hang on uh, against uh, an onrushing Ohio State team. Well, I, and I do think that when all else fails, go SEC, and whether it's conscious or subconscious. And I do understand that, first and foremost here. I don't want anybody to get you know, their toes stepped on, certainly with some of the ESPN announcers. But my, my, I, I don't think Mississippi State, while it's a great story, I don't think they're the fourth best team. I don't think they've earned the fourth ranking in the nation. I think Florida State, that I think this committee is waiting for Florida State to lose – They've done everything you could ask as a national champ. They're not as good as last year. Winston's not as good, but they've done everything you've asked. They've gone undefeated. Uh, Alabama, if you say it's sort of they, they passed the sight test, that's not what I want a committee member to tell me. You've passed the sight test on offense, defense, and special teams. This is where it gets to back to where we were with the BCS that it seems arbitrary in rankings. And I don't want that. I want them to say, here's the empirical data that says this is why we have our top four, not be vague. And I think they've been vague this year, certainly this past week. Well, the, the problem is something we talked about months ago, and they shouldn't be having this talk back every Tuesday night on ESPN because – now, the, the smartest lawyer in the country couldn't remember everything he said the previous week, and Jeff Long is not the smartest lawyer in the country. He's he's a, he's an athletic director, and he's a good one, but but he's running into uh, to brick walls trying to to say things. And, and last week he he really just quit talking almost altogether uh, because there are there are inconsistencies and there are precedents that are being shattered week to week. And and I, I didn't like the BCS either, but. Uh, we saw the poll every week, and, and, and we had a pretty good idea what was going on. This, this way, I'm, not, I'm not really not sure what's going on. And uh, they say they have a clean slate every Monday and Tuesday. I'm, I'm not sure I buy that either. But, Paul, I, the one thing about the BCS is the BCS said, hey, the hell with you. Here's the rankings. Yeah. Deal with it. They didn't have, you know, Bill Hancock would sort of be there, but he wasn't there to tell you why there was one versus two. And there, there was a Kaiser Sose feel towards the BCS. That's what this committee needs to adopt. Stop talking. You don't have to. They think they have to explain everything. And the problem is, is there's loopholes. We're waiting to have them fall or there's going to be some kind of slip up there. And I didn't think Jeff Long did a good job with that in trying to explain Mississippi State was in that game. I mean, it's a backdoor cover. Alabama was a far better team. And you're going to tell me that Alabama passed the site test. I mean, that's not that's not how we're ranking teams now. Brent Musburger on me with all these uh, gambling terms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, a backdoor cover. Uh, right in the middle of an Eminem interview. Uh, Have you ever gambled? Dan, uh, do you ever gamble? Uh, no, I've never gambled. Ever? Ever. I, uh, and it's one of the few things I've never done illegally. But I, I just never got into it, thank goodness. Because uh, it, it bugs me when I see, not to get off on another subject or sound like Dave Zirin, but when I see, when I see sports writers in the press box, hang around trying to pick up information, then go make a bet right before the game. It does, uh, it does bother me a great deal. But back to your point. You've seen that? Um, I have seen that, yeah. I mean, I have seen people talk to assistant coaches before games and then, and, and then, and then make a call. This is a little, you know, a little bit dated now, but I, I've seen it all. Wow. Uh, so best guest here, who ends up fourth? Who ends up fifth? I... I feel like Ohio State is going to end up fourth, uh, I, and, and that, that, that's that, because they have, they have the last weekend to themselves. Mississippi State will be sitting in uh, Starkville 
uh, biting fingernails. Uh, and one thing back to what you said about Jeff Long, I mean, all of a sudden Alabama goes from sixth to fifth to first. He bases that on one game at home, and, and that didn't make sense either. They're no. a complete team. They're the most complete team. Um, and, and he was inconsistent, as you said, on Mississippi State because that game was, was really never in doubt in my mind. So uh, I think Ohio State jumps Mississippi State at the end. Paul, this is what I, I want the committee to factor in, and we do it in all of the sports, that if you're playing great at the end of the season, that should factor in a little bit more than because you lost at home to Virginia Tech with your backup quarterback who had no experience. Ohio State, to me, is one of the top four teams in the country with the way they're playing right now. Yeah, but it, it is going to be difficult uh, deciphering that and, and thinking about losing to Virginia Tech at home versus losing to Alabama, the number one team on the road. And, and that's where they put themselves, yep. though. I mean, if they, if they didn't intend to put Mississippi State in the four teams, assuming everything goes according to plan, they should have put them fifth or sixth this week, and they didn't. Do you realize the outcry, though, when if there are two SEC teams in the Final Four? <laughs> oh, I do, and I can't wait. I, but I would love, I would love to have a, a, a kind of a geographical feel to this. Not that that's what their goal is, but if you had the SEC, if I had Florida State, there was Alabama. Let's say you had Oregon, you had Ohio State. I mean, I, I, I just, I want to make sure we're factoring in everything here. If you want to have TCU or Baylor, great. I'm, I'm all for it. I don't want to have sort of, hey, we're going to be, uh, you know, give you a gift and slide you into the number four. You have to earn it, but. I, I, I just hope it's not just, you know, in one area, because I think it's going to do more damage than, than they know. No, no, I, listen, I agree with you on that, and, and I can go either way. Uh, I'm, I'm really on the bubble. Uh, and it's, it has nothing to do with where I live and, and the team and, and the sport and the, and the conference that I cover. Uh, I just think it, you'll know the final weekend, and, 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 I, and I think I do know. I, I don't think it will be Mississippi State, but – uh, like I said, uh, they've set a bad precedent. But they, they've set a bad precedent all year long, uh, and, and they don't seem to really care. Uh, they like what they're doing. They're, they're creating. They, they think they're creating uh, debate. What they're what they're going to create is 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 really an ugly controversy, as you said. You got uh, Yale at Harvard this weekend, College Game Day. Yeah, that's that's what you, you would expect that, wouldn't you? That's 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 always on the list of games that you have to cover. Have you been there? No, and I really. Uh, I love what I'm doing, but I, I've always wanted to go to that game. I don't want to sound like an elitist living in the South, but that's that's a game I've... A lot of tweed, my, uh, a lot of plaid. You're going to, you know, fur coats. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they're, gonna, they're probably going to sandwich that in between two trips to Tuscaloosa. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be the guest picker at Harvard? Um, you know, they wanted, uh, they wanted Obama last year. I kept hearing his name. I don't think he's going to make the trip. Um, but it has to be a Kennedy, doesn't it? Man. I don't know, that's, that's How about sure. Tommy Lee that's Jones, who went to uh, Yale? Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. He, uh, yeah. No, Tommy Lee and, uh, and Al Gore were roommates, I believe, at Harvard. Hmm. Oh, at Harvard. I, for some reason, I thought uh, yeah, he went to Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. No, I, I mean, I, 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 do, I don't want to ever... Here you okay. go. Paul, I got it. Paul, I got it. I got it. You ready? Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> he, he, he didn't stay very long, though, did he? he, he well, you know, he stayed long enough. Stayed yeah, long enough to borrow some things and then, you know, became a – he's got a jet. I think, Bill, I think Bill Gates was there about a year, too. Yeah, maybe have Gates Zuckerberg there. Yeah, two guys that never graduated but uh, but dropped in. Yeah. I, I love it. I just wish – you know, I mean, Chris Fowler had a line the other day. He said that you know, other than the grades and the $50,000 a year, he, he would have been in both schools. <laughs> if you need somebody as a guest picker, I'm in the area, Paul. Um, I'll, I'll pass it along to Lee Fitting. I mean, after Katy Perry and yep. and I Alice can bring Cooper, corn I'll, dogs. I'll bring corn dogs. I'll do whatever. <laughs> t- I'll do keg stands. Uh, I'll go streaking in the quad. I mean, I'll do whatever uh, they need me to do. And, and, and Lee Fitting, I know Lee, so Lee should be fine with this. And Yeah, I, I think he, he, would, he would improve his stock of, of advancement at the company <laughs> by, by having you there. Well, I appreciate that the mothership allows you uh, 10 minutes a day to, uh, to listen to the program. That's very nice. I appreciate that, Paul. I just quit asking for permission, Dan. <laughs> You're learning. Thank you, I, Paul. Uh, oh, it was my pleasure. Thank right. you. Paul Feinbaum. Paul Feinbaum Radio Network. My conference can beat your conference. Why the SEC rules college football. That's Paul's new book.